another really uh, exciting and interesting uh, synchronicity is that um, around the time that uh, we were beginning uh, uh, to, to preparing to leave uh, for Egypt and uh, during this delegation, um, me and uh, Nassim and our research team uh, have been uh, uh, corresponding, collaborating with uh, a team in the Netherlands, uh, Dr. Uh, Hans G. Sink and Dirk Meijer. Uh, and uh, these are uh, professors out in the Netherlands uh, who uh, had read uh, a number of uh, our papers and Nassim's work on uh, um, toroidal geometry, toroidal to topology, and its role in um, uh, uh, information and space-time geometry, uh, and then our, our unified space memory network paper, uh, so how that relates to consciousness. Uh, and uh, they, they contacted us and uh, shared some of the work that they've been doing, uh, and it was very much in parallel with what, with what we've been looking at. And uh, one of the key features uh, is the, the role of sound and light uh, in the body. Uh, and so um, uh, their work in particular, they've done a, a meta-analysis uh, of about 500 research papers uh, that have looked at uh, electromagnetic frequencies uh, as well as uh, acoustic frequencies uh, in the body uh, and that have reported on uh, either uh, potential uh, healing effects, restorative properties, or uh, potential uh, detrimental deleterious effects of particular uh, frequencies. And so they've uh, done this analysis of uh, over 500 research papers uh, that have all reported data. Uh, and they've sifted through all this information and they've found that this very uh, particular pattern uh, which is based uh, on wh what uh, what they've seen in this pattern is that it follows this uh, uh, Pythagorean uh, uh, twelve interval based uh, scale, uh, and so um, there's this uh, they, they call it a, a, a life algorithm uh, of very uh, specific harmonic ratios of electromagnetic frequencies uh, that are present in the body uh, uh, as well as uh, acoustic frequencies. Um, and that's what I want to uh, highlight uh, that are uh, playing this role of uh, uh, increasing through, through kind of a, a quantum coherent effect of producing like a geometric wave pattern that, that is helping to uh, keep the body uh, uh, in a healthy state, or they've also identified particular uh, uh, fre frequency ranges that are particularly uh, potentially uh, uh, detrimental to the health. Um, they, they lead to decoherence versus uh, coherence. Uh, but uh, what's really uh, cool about it is the interplay of the light and the sound within uh, the body. Uh, so, you know, this is the exchange of photons and phonons. Uh, so photons being particles of light, pho phonons being uh, quasi-particles of sound, uh, discrete units of sound. Uh, and um, what uh, is found is uh, the uh, central and important role that sound plays in uh, inducing this kind of quantum coherence in the body. Um, and this is actually probably one of the oldest and first instances of uh, the study of uh, quantum biology. Uh, and it started with uh, Dr. Froelich back in uh, the, the late 1960s, early 1970s, where one of the first things he, he, uh, that were described for quantum coherence in the biological system, quantum mechanical type phenomenal effects uh, was 
um, the role sound vibrations would play in creating quantum coherent states of biological molecules. Uh, you know, particularly the long polymers of biological molecules, like uh, DNA is this long strand, right? A lot of the proteins are these long polymer strands, and they can get the, these uh, uh, vibrations all through them uh, uh, that uh, have very particular harmonic ratios, uh, and this can lead to uh, quantum coherence, and it can also uh, uh, lead to the stimulation of the emission of light, or the absorption of light can induce this kind of acoustic vibration in a lot of these structures. And of course, the most important one would be uh, the, the membranes, uh, the, the outer and inner cellular membranes, which can vibrate like a drum. Uh, but, you know, these vibrations uh, are, are, you know, producing these, these standing wave patterns, what Maju and Jisink call uh, uh, solitons, uh, a solitary standing wave, uh, but they can produce the, these uh, wave patterns that act very much like uh, the, the wave patterns in pilot wave theory uh, that shape and uh, determine uh, particle interactions and also uh, um, uh, uh, particle behavior uh, even of uh, um, uh, 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 non-local type um, what are called uh, uh, EPR type correlations. Um, but uh, so uh, it, um, it was just very synchronistic that uh, here is uh, this work that it is paralleling our own that uh, very much uh, is describing how sound uh, is a vital part of um, the, the cellular and intercellular communication occurring in the body and what's keeping that uh, high level of coherence. Uh, and then you see it uh, at work out in Egypt in these uh, huge structures that are establishing this kind of harmonic resonance. Uh, so uh, I just found uh, that that was very uh, exciting uh, to see that all come together. Thank you.